fighting. I'm so sorry. I should have showed you more attention. This is the best Malaysian chicken skewer you can get in New York City at this price. This is lobster sticky rice for $38, so this is a pretty good deal. I gotta get into this first, man. I just... This is one of the long-lasting dollar dumpling spots. Whoa, Chinatown Cheap Eats part 15? If you're wondering why we're almost 200 restaurants in and there's still more to go, then it's because New York City has the largest concentration of Chinese people of any city outside of Asia. Yes, that is big facts. Not to mention that, you know, all types of people love the food. So in this episode, we find out if this spot is the best new Malaysian food in Chinatown, if Korean fried chicken really is the wave, and if Chinese burgers and boba are the new combo. Please hit that like button and let's go. All right, starting off this episode of Cheap Chinatown Eats, we got a brand new spot on Grand Street in the middle of a busy, busy, you know, intersection, guys. We got I Milky. The quality is top notch, and it, it is very interesting to keep seeing new Taiwanese brands come over here from Taiwan to open up shops here. It seems like it's going to be never ending. Um, here we have the fresh taro milk. Taro is very smooth. The boba is tender and juicy. Up next, we got the fresh mango milk. Wow, that was delicious. I definitely recommend it. Guys, I actually saw a comment from an old Cantonese guy one time on one of our former videos that was saying something like, along the lines of, hey man, I'm tired of all these Taiwanese chains from Taiwan coming into Chinatown and gentrifying Chinatown and pushing out the other Cantonese businesses. And you know, I kind of got what he was saying, but I'm gonna be honest, it's just kind of like the rise of boba. And the rise of boba is gonna involve a lot of Taiwanese chains because this is what people want. So it's a supply and demand situation. But I'll tell you straight up, the quality is really good. All right guys, you know we do a lot of food videos, we eat a lot of food, we run around the city and it can get very tiring. I can sometimes even feel sluggish. So that's why I gotta give a shout out to the sponsor of our video and a proud supporter of the Fun Bros. G Fuel. I know you guys have heard of this. Um, they work with all different YouTubers, TikTokers, Twitch streamers, and they have two main products that are super, super popular. They have their can and their powder, and they even got the shaker too. So uh, the can is really cool because it's zero calories, zero sugar, zero crash. It actually has a lot of organic and vitamin filled ingredients in here. I mean, you could take a look at it. Broccoli, kale, blueberry, tart cherry, green tea extract. It's legit, guys. And then their powder, is very low calorie. They just have an unmatched variety of flavors. I mean, this one is Sage Mode. This one is Yuzu Slash. I mean, they have a whole bunch more. You can look on their website. So if you guys are interested in buying any G Fuel, checking it out, you can go through all the different flavors. They have tons of them. Um, check out the website and use our code FUNGROS. It will give you 30% off. Oh man, I'm kind of tired, man. I so listen, if you are looking for an energy drink that is made with high quality ingredients, packed with vitamins, antioxidants, no calories, no crash, and even it even has some Asian inspired flavors, then check out G Fuel, link down below, type in Fung Bros. All right, so the interesting part is that I Milky is in the same little space as Burger by Day. And Burger by Day is a Chinese burger concept. I got the chicken burgers. This one's spicy, this one's not spicy. They're both about nine and ten dollars. Now, I would say the spices on this spicy one are a little bit Asian in the sense that it kind of tastes like that spicy uh, chicken filet sandwich from McDonald's that we all love. In fact, I want to just eat this piece of chicken on its own. That's how good it is. Perfectly mm. cooked thigh meat. Not complaining, bro. Straight up, guys. I don't know about the bread, but the chicken aspect is a 10 out of 10. This is Burger by Day's Half Pound Angus Bacon Cheeseburger. So actually, the owner of Burger by Day was a former video game designer from Hong Kong. He was doing Nintendo and PlayStation games, and now he's doing burgers, guys. We got the Smash Burger. Obviously, this is very trendy right now, but they got the QP Mayo, um, the clam shell potato bun. And you know, I just think it's really cool that Asians are cooking more burgers. This is something that was needed in, in Chinatown, you know, a place that was like, you know, catering towards Asians, but serving burgers. Mmm. Simple, but delicious. And those onions are charred perfectly. This whole food hall kind of vibe does kind of remind me of a, of a place that I've been in Singapore or Taiwan, you know. All right, our next spot on Chinatown Cheap Eats is actually a Vietnamese spot. That's a classic spot that we haven't reviewed yet. It's on Bowery, it's called New Tudo. It's been here for a while. All the Chinatown heads would know this spot, um, but I gotta say, 
that although maybe they don't always rank the highest on any single item, they have a lot of items that are very deep cut that you can't get at other Viet spots. I'm talking about like bun bale, they have this raw beef salad. I don't know if I'm gonna get that, but maybe. But anyways, a lot of the dishes are under $11. Let's check it out, New Tudo. All right, the food has arrived here at New Tudo, and I got the pho right here. This is actually under $10. This costs only $9.75. It's actually a really hefty bowl. And then here I have the egg omelet. This is actually a chiu jiao food. And because the owners are actually chiu jiao, you know, the Chinese Vietnamese, they're of the diaspora, but they've been running Vietnamese restaurants for so long. This is a real deep cut dish. You're not gonna find anywhere else. This is only $11. The bun sale is actually very hard to find at other restaurants around here. This was only $14. You got the uh, pork belly, you got some shrimp, lots of turmeric. You have your greens right here and you have your dip. I'm excited. Yes. Full broth, not bad. Yeah, kind of, kind of sweet actually. I think a lot of people are gonna like that. The beef looks good. I'm just gonna try the flank steak right here. Barely cooked, as you know, a little bit red. And I don't use sriracha when I'm eating my pho, to be honest. I'm kind of against it because I know sriracha is not very traditional. Underrated, man. A lot of people don't talk about new Tudo. They've been business for a while. I mean, look how murky that broth is. Can't even see through that. That's how you know. It's got a lot of like the parts of the beef all melted into the broth. I want to say their noodles are a little bit bigger than other spots too, guys. I got to give the pho, man, to be honest, straight up. I haven't been here in a while. Give it a four out of five. Uh, got a, this one is for the bun sale. This one for chow kue. Oh, chow kue. Okay, okay. This one for bun sale. Okay, okay. That's what I want to make sure. Thank you. The Vietnamese egg roll wrapped in lettuce or the bun sale wrapped in lettuce is actually one of my favorite things to eat. I love it. It's like crispy. It's fatty. It's a little fried, but it's got meat and just the freshness from the lettuce. It's got everything in this bite. I am genuinely enjoying this. You guys gotta come here and get the bun sale. That's delicious. And last but not least, for under $11, we got a dish that really reminds me of the 626 because there's so many chill jiao restaurants in the 626, but not as much out here. We have this egg omelet chill jiao style. It's got the taro cake in there. Thank God, you know. Mmm. Guys, New Tudo has been in the game for a while. Do not forget about them. Do not sleep on them. The pho is way above average. I'm really liking this. And with the fresh Ben Sayo, guys, it's hard to beat, man. Definitely check out New Tudo if you're looking for Vietnamese food in Chinatown, man. It should be on the list. And you know what? I've been going to my usual spots. I know we all have our usual spots, but I might have to break off from the norm more because I'm so glad I came back here and was reminded why New Tudo has been in the game so long. Next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, man, it's a brand new spot called Curry House. It's Malaysian and Thai, but it's mostly Malaysian food. Here they have some deep cut dishes. This is the curry beef brisket over uh, mi, and the mi is like the thick egg noodles. Um, man, I'm pretty excited to try this. They also have Stingray, we're about to try that. So man, let me tell you this, it's pretty cool to have Malaysian spots that are serving things like Stingray. Even though that's not my favorite dish, it's just cool to see. Curry beef brisket meat. They call this spot curry house because the curry is fire. This is one of the best Malaysian curries you can get in Chinatown. Guys, I think it's really cool that this spot is serving Malaysian and Thai food because those two cuisines are actually technically part of the India sphere, influenced by India. That's why they have a lot of curries and the curry is really, really good if you've never had Malaysian curry. This spot is called Curry House, so they have curry skate wings and skate wings are essentially like small stingrays. It's a very popular food to eat in Southeast Asia, particularly Singapore and Malaysia. I had it out there. They serve it all the time at the Hakka stall. Fried here, pretty good. I say it's a good way to try it. If stingray usually sounds very intimidating to you because you're like, ah, I don't want to look at the whole skate wing, the whole steak. Try it in this form, it's a lot easier to eat. Mm. Though skate wing is considered more of a throwaway fish in America, um, even Koreans actually eat a sizable amount too. Look, you can see it. I pulled that meat right off the bone. How does it taste? It kind of tastes like a cod type fish. Of course, you know, we have chicken rice, you know, in the Singaporean Malaysian style, thinly sliced with a little bit of sweet soy sauce on top. Here, because there's a lot of Chinese in Malaysia, they give you the ginger scallion, the gurung chong, but they also give you more of the Thai version, which is a little bit spicy here. So let's take a look at this. Uh-huh, nice little piece. Nice yellow rice, that's how you know it's flavored. Let me put it in the red sauce first. Mmm, 
for me, I actually love all chicken rices, cow moon guys, the Hainan chicken, um, but I do prefer ginger scallion on my chicken. I think it's a great pairing, so I'm glad they serve it here. Mmm. This is the most authentic ice chendol I've seen in New York City, man. It looks like it's straight out the hawker stall. Um, now, the owners are from Ipo. That is a city that's in between Penang and Kuala Lumpur. Um, let's take a look at it. Wow. Dude, that looks super authentic. You got grass jelly. You have the green jelly. Uh, I believe this is more made out of pandan. And then you have the red bean and you have corn, all with some condensed milk at the bottom. Mmm. Oh, that's pretty good. I know Malaysians know about some cold desserts because it can get super hot out there. Guys, we are looking at a authentic lam gua drink, which is uh, just yellow pumpkin. I never even had that before in my entire life. All right, you guys, we got the ayam satay skewers. Um, ayam in Bahasa, Malay, is chicken. We're gonna be taking the house-made satay sauce, drizzling it on top. Of course, more how you would do it in the Hakka style. It's just like rotating around like a pig in the mud. With a little bit of onion. I'm telling you, this is the best Malaysian chicken skewer you can get in New York City at this price. Like we said, Malaysian is a very interesting culture because it's part of the Indiosphere, but it's also part of the Sinosphere. And obviously, it's got its own local Malay culture. This is a roti kanai. This is more from the Indian side, but this curry is kind of a hybrid of all the cultures that make up that region because it's not gonna fully taste like an Indian curry. All right, you guys, we're looking at bakate, which obviously is a, a pork medicinal mushroom soup from that region. It's more from the Chinese side. What I'm gonna do is take a, one of these pieces of pork. I'm going to dip it in this house-made chili sauce. And that's really, really, really good. It is very difficult to find this bakate dish here in New York City. Woo! Wow, one sip of bakate I turn into Malaysian uncle. You know, when I was growing up, I just really thought that Chinese people only came from like Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Beijing in Taiwan, but then uh, it actually really opened it up once I got older. I realized there are like millions and millions of Chinese people in Southeast Asia, and they've been there for like hundreds of years. So their culture is really a unique mix of a lot of different layers, and I think that makes it really cool. Tada fried chicken. It is a brand new Korean concept right in the heart of Chinatown here on Bayard, and that is significant. It shows how, uh, you know, Chinatown is changing and becoming more Pan-Asian. We love this spot, though. It's from the same people that did Tofu Tofu on Bowery. Let's go check it out. All right, so here at Tada, they try to make it fun. They got a lot of cool drinks that you would have maybe in Korea. So this is a green tea mandarin um, lemonade. And then this is a ginger hot tea lemonade. And then this is a mango smoothie with a piece of fresh ripe mango right on the side. Oh, you could come here, share it with friends. This is a fun drink. It's really good too. Have all the popular modern Korean snacks, guys. You know, the things that you've seen in K-dramas and K-pop. Uh, videos and this is the army stew of course it's got oh look at that bacon you got hot dogs you got plenty of kimchi you got some cheese and you get the fresh ramen let's try it hsbc army ramen between drinks like this and dishes like this no wonder korean restaurants are so fun here's their shrimp fried rice with the egg on top they put a little bit of sesame seeds i really like how it looks and i like how they even left the little tails on the shrimp that's how you know it's fresh let's try it Mmm, light, eggy, mmm. Right, so now we have the Tada fried chicken. These are the premier items. I saw them each individual lathered with the sauce. So, um, Kelly, can you tell us more about the chicken? Yeah, we have four different kinds of sauce, but uh, I select for the very popular one, two flavors. This is for the combo and the mini and broth, mm. with honey, soy, garlic. Ooh. This is very famous, like, no spicy. So, if you like it, and then, uh, Spicy like it. Easy to eat, not too spicy. Yeah, it's okay. not spicy at all. But this one is uh, sweet and spicy. Ooh. spicy. This is goddamn yeah. spicy. This is the, yeah. the bottom level spicy, and then this is not spicy. Yeah. Okay. Tada is going to be the premier fried chicken yeah. house in Chinatown, yeah. guys. Freshly fried, not fried already sitting there and then refried. We're talking about freshly yeah. fried every time you order. Right. Tada! Okay. Tada! Fighting. Guys, this is a big old drumstick of the soy garlic, freshly fried, individually 
lathered up. Wow. There are all types of people like Korean fried chicken, guys. It's not just Koreans, it's not just Asians, it's everybody. Because I think, honestly, everybody can love fried chicken. And of course, you guys know the history of Korean fried chicken. It does come, you know, influenced and inspired by the American army that was in Korea that brought, you know, Southern American style fried chicken over first. But man, Koreans have done their own thing with it. And check out this new way to eat this wing. Let's see how spicy this is. This is the second level spicy. That had a nice little gochujang kick, but this is the goddamn spicy. The spiciest. Like fried chicken, you know one of the most important aspects is that it's freshly cooked and Tada is doing it. And you know, sometimes when there's only like one type of restaurant in an area of that kind, you kind of question like, is it the best or is it just getting by because it's just the only one of its kind? But no, Tada is very, very high quality and the chicken is delicious. I remember one of the things that really drew me to the San Gabriel or like Roland Heights area initially was how Pan-Asian it was. You could get great pho, you could get great Thai food, Korean food, and of course Chinese food in that zone. And I feel like that's the future of Chinatowns around America as well, Pan-Asian towns, uh, but with a lot of respect and love for each other. And boy, am I glad that it's moving in that direction. Okay, so they don't just have like Korean dishes. They also have the pork katsu right here that is freshly fried, look at that. Very juicy, very crispy. And then they also have this cold bibin nam young. This is obviously a Korean dish, but it's uh, not the soupy one that most people are used to having. So let me try this. This is bibin nam young without the soup. Great for cooling off after you eat some fried chicken. Mm. Guys, this is our freshly fried pork katsu. Just gonna dip it in like that. To have this diversity of dishes, here in a spot like this, it's very cool, and I'm glad to see it. Shout out to Kelly and the team. Chinatown changes, and there's more Pan-Asian, non-Chinese concepts coming here. You know, there's also a lot of Chinese restaurants opening up in East Village and even Midtown, by Koreatown. So, you know, all these kind of like Asian enclaves or Asian neighborhoods are probably gonna be exchanging a lot more in the future, and I could see it happening, but I don't know, it's cool to see. All right, everybody, our next spot in Cheap Chinatown Eats is a gem called Round K by Soul. Shout out to Han here on Canal, guys. They have some new items on the menu for 15 bucks. You get this shrimp burger with air fried chips. You got this chicken sandwich with the, with the pickled cabbage on it for $15. And then here you got this espresso martini. And during happy hour, this is only $10 down from $16. So that's a good deal. And then you have this purple um, ube uh, roll cake right here, which is obviously what they're known for. So let me try this espresso martini, get it going. The espresso martini. Nice. All right, so for $15, you might be like, okay, that's not the cheapest chicken sandwich you can get in Chinatown, but it is cheap considering the quality of ingredients and the amount of work that these ladies put in. So let me try this chicken. Man, it looks a little different. It's definitely got some different seasoning on there. So let's try it. I'm tasting some Korean spices, especially some gochujang in there. That chicken is super juicy. The bread is nice. Everything's coming together really well. Here's the shrimp burger with the kimchi ranch right here. Lots of greens. Mmm. That's how you know it's a hit. It's so messy. I'm enjoying myself. It's actually multiple fried shrimp instead of a shrimp patty. I think that makes it taste honestly a lot better and you get more of that pure shrimp flavor. A cream roll cake with yuzu jam on the inside. Let's take a look at that. Oh very aesthetically forward and uh, delicious. Looking at the prices, maybe Round K isn't the absolute cheapest thing you can get in Chinatown, but it is like the cheapest elevated hipster thing you can get in Chinatown. All right, so I had to tell you about Soul K's night menu. Here I have a Soul Mule with Jinro Soju, and then I have the double fried Korean popcorn chicken. I'm very excited about this. Let's check this out. Oh, crispy. Wow, double fried. This is the grandpa soju. Super smoky. All right, this has oak bitters and Jinro 24. Han, what were you trying to do with this drink? Why'd you call it grandpa so 
because it's a smoky and then it tastes like a like old fashioned. So that's why we named it Grandpa Soju. All right, Grandpa Soju. I feel like I'm in a in a forest fire right now. That's real Calbi. That's a real Calbi skewer that she's about to put in the drink. It's gonna be interesting. I'm, I'm excited for it. Wow! Oh my Whoa! Goodness, guys, here I found K by Soul. I don't know. Just, let me just take it off. Yeah, sure. Do it. Whoa. Whoa. That's a true Calbi cocktail right there, guys. It does it taste like Korean barbecue or not? Are we at Jongro with Jinro or what? What's going on? It doesn't taste like Jongro. Honestly, if I had to compare it to a Korean barbecue, it'd be more like Coke. Wow. Really and honestly, this is one of the best inventive cocktails I've ever had in my life, guys. I mean, you've got a gigantic piece of Calbi. They've seared it. It tastes good on its own. And then, of course, like you said, the drink has some like sesame oil in it. And soy sauce. This is the first time I have ever seen a true roasted meat skewer cocktail, guys. This is high quality sous vide Calbi right here. This is delicious. You guys gotta come to Round K because they're doing some crazy things over here on Canal Street. Okay, next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, we got a brand new pizza shop here on Baxter. It is called Baxter Street Pizza. Um, you know, there's not a lot of slice spots in Chinatown. In fact, this might be the first one, and I gotta go check it out because it is Asian owned. All right, I got two slices of pizza and garlic knots, all for about $14 after tax. Lots of garlic on top, I like to see that. This is the vodka slice, this was recommended. Cheese is gooey. Okay, and then we got the fungi slice. Okay, let's peep the mushrooms. Okay, nice and cooked. Maybe pre-cooked before as well, so that, that that's a good sign. Dip that garlic in the sauce. Mmm, right off the bat, the garlic knots are hitting. They're very fluffy. Tons of garlic flavor. Um, honestly, I would give those garlic knots right out the gate like a 4.5 out of five. That's some of the best garlic knots you can get in, in the area, to be honest. And the sauce is very spiced. I can see the pepper inside. All right, everybody, I'm trying the box slice. All right, time for the fungi. One of my favorite slices in the game right now. There's no meat, just mushrooms. Probably sauteed with some nice, you know, seasoning and olive oil. All right, so as far as my verdict for Baxter Street Pizza, I gotta say, guys, price-wise, it's solid. $4 a slice, you know, that is very standard for high-quality slices. I feel like the cheese maybe feels a little bit less, like, Italian than other spots that I've been to, but I'll tell you this, the garlic knots are on point, and I think that, you know, they're just starting out, and I'm glad that there's a slice spot in Chinatown that is owned by someone of the community, and I heard that maybe they are gonna be able to do some Asian slices by pre-order so you know maybe like a peking duck or something like that that's what i've heard but you know what it's their grand opening soon so all i gotta say is just check out baxter street pizza new york city is this new spot tip tara thai in the lower east side in the neighborhood obviously thai food is nothing new but they got some new dishes here they have a duck they got some clay pot stuff they got some catfish stuff and here we have the first dish the basil mussels um uh it's a little bit spicy very herbaceous not too sour and this is only 11 bucks, guys. I think this is a steal. You gotta try this. Really important that you expand beyond Pad CU and Pad Thai. Actually, those dishes are good. I still order them from time to time, but man, listen to the people who own the shop. They'll tell you what is gonna be good. They'll tell you the best stuff to get. Next up, on Beyond Pad CU and Pad Thai, you guys gotta check out this catfish larb. It's fried, it's crispy, it's uh, very sour, but a little bit sweet, and it's fresh, tossed in like a salad form. Uh, kinda like your chicken larb that you would get, but you guys gotta check this out, and this is only 20 bucks here, so this entire dish is a steal. Mm. Coconut sticky rice with a little bit of egg. Um, they make it here fresh. Man, this is something I've never had before. I've heard of coconut rice, of course, 
but I've never seen it grilled with egg before. So this is something new. New Asian food in New York City. Crazy. All right, I'm gonna eat it with my uh, grilled catfish larb. I'm gonna have to take some of this. I wanna get some of the shallots. I'm just gonna grab it like that. Yup, that's how we do it. Like I said here at Tip Tara, they are not like any other Thai restaurant. As you can see here, you have your grilled coconut sticky rice with egg on it. I've never seen this before. And then you have the beautiful catfish larb. I'm about to eat them together, of course, because that's how you do it. Let me grab it, get my fingers dirty. It's worth it. Wow. All right, here I have their crispy duck. Um, this is called the Tip Tara duck. It's from the Samluk style of Thai food and let's look at it, man. It's smothered in a sweet and sour sauce um, with a lot of fresh pineapples. I'm just gonna try it right, like this. That's how I'm going in. Guys, if you have had Tom Yum Soup, Pad Siu, Pad Thai already 10, 15 times in your life and you have the chance to order these dishes, you have to try them. What are you doing just getting those dishes? Hey, Pad, pad Thai is good, but we're talking about Tip Tara Duck right here. You guys, next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, we're at a brand new Toy San spot called Grandmaster 95. I've got something off the lunch menu right here. This is Jiu Yin Ju Pai, which is a uh, just, you know, salt and pepper pork chop, nine bucks, give you a lot of pieces. And of course, I got something that is uh, not cheap, cheap, but cheap for what it is. This is lobster sticky rice for $38. So this is a pretty good deal. I gotta get into this first, man. I just, you know, I see the lobster, it calls my name. All right, you guys, this dish at a lot of spots, let's just say, for example, a Hakkasan, $78, $98. $9 salt and pepper pork chops. Kind of reminds me of 69 restaurant uh, back on Bayard that is no longer there. I would consider this a slight update on your classic Chinatown Toy San spot. You've got your cheap lunch menu items done very well, the more expensive seafood items, except they got, you know, local micro brews in the fridge. This salt and pepper pork chop is good. That's a Chinatown cheap eat. All right, everybody, we're here at Grandmaster, and yo, I gotta tell you about this chili crisp oil that they got here is fire. Ask for the la chu yao. And then here I got it on some rice. Look at that nice little cooked fried ginger with the sticky rice. And then you got that last succulent piece of lobster I'm about to get on. Andrew, next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, we have a unique blend between Cantonese and Taiwanese culture. Boba's Taiwanese, Andrew. The mango mango spots are Canto. It's like a mix. Yeah, this is a Canto-owned boba shop right here on Foresight, guys. They finally opened. I've seen this sign for like six months now. Fruit vanity, let's go in and check it out. Look at that. We're trying to get the mango mango drink that's in the window. Could you put it on? All right, I'll get a matcha avocado. And we're at Fruit Vanity right now. It's Cantonese owned. It's true that Cantonese people do not drink as much boba as Taiwanese people. No, I would say Cantonese people, especially Hong Kongese, much are more into fruit than the milk drinks or the milk teas even. And they even have their own Lai Tsa. So actually some people in HK, believe it or not, don't drink boba. Yeah. Well, here uh, I have a avocado matcha. David, you got the mango mango. Yeah, I think instead of opening two concepts, Andrew, why not just mix a Hong Kong mango spot, mango spot with a boba shop? Hey guys, the long awaited opening of Fruit Vandy. I've seen this sign for like seven months, man. Glad they're open. Dude, these fruits are so cocky. Next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, we've got Hawa smoothies and bubble tea, guys. This is the original location. Now they've got several across the city, guys. It was unheard of at that time for Chinese to be making fresh juices with fresh fruits but Hawa set the mark. All right, you guys, I just got the Super Crane, one size, $10, but I got it with the boba. Are, th are these the best smoothies in Chinatown? Yeah. 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 She, said, she, she can verify. Yeah. She's verify. She's not okay. Chinese, she, she's not the same. Okay. They are the best. All right, we got to confirm from the local community, it's the best plus you can get boba inside of a healthy smoothie. I don't know, acai, blueberries, cranberries, and boba up in this. You guys, this is a Chinatown mashup. Acai with boba. Acai, flaxseed, boba. 
All right, as part of our late night series, man, we got a late night gem, and it's open till 11, but it's pretty clutch for this area. This is China North Dumpling over on Essex Street in the Lower East Side, man. This is one of the long lasting dollar dumpling spots. I mean, this whole, uh, all these dumplings are only $3, and then this was only $4 for the bok choy, and then your kimchi was only $3, and yeah, so this is Chinese, but obviously you can find kimchi, partially just because I think Everybody likes kimchi, but also because the owners are from Shenyang, which is Dongbei, which is really close to Korea. So there's some crossover there. Here you got some vinegar. I'm about to do a little bit there. And that's not black vinegar, that's white vinegar. Here they have their own little soy sauce mixture. It's like essentially New York has its own dumpling sauce that everybody does, and then you douse it. And this, this is pretty much the way to eat it. Let's go in. These are the fried ones. They're cheaper than the steam ones that are freshly made. Mm. This is one of the best deals you can get in New York, Essex Street. A lot of hipsters eating here. I think you know, this spot feeds many, many a hipster in the Lower East Side, China North Dumpling. And the kimchi. Dongbei kimchi, Chinese kimchi, I feel like the times I've had, it's a little less pungent. And it's a little bit toned down. So this is a great accompaniment to the other greens that are not kimchi, but these are kind of like, a, they call them sauteed, bok choy, I think they're boiled or sauteed with a little bit of garlic, a little bit of soy sauce. Very great addition. I don't know why I take the uh, dongbei kimchi, the pao cai, and uh, put it on the dumplings, the jiaozi, but I just do. Next up on Cheap Chinatown Eats, we got a brand new spot called Strawberry Home here on Mott Street. They are blending ice cream with boba. It's from the same people who do Miss Do's, so you know the quality is there. Strawberry Home. Dave, Dave, you got a brown sugar boba ice cream. I have a ice cream cone and at, with a, a special request to get mango jam on top. This really looks like the ice cream cone from uh, Chinese McDonald's. What do you think about people trying to bring the products like one for one from Asia? Like, I really like that idea. I'm a huge fan of the McDonald's Shanghai Mc McChicken sandwich. The ice cream, it's a little icy, but it's very, very milky, has a great taste. And with the mango jam, it's actually pretty fire, man. It's it's not the softest soft serve, but I actually like the consistency. Hey, Ms. Do's, they do make good products. I have a fresh dragon fruit lemonade. She took the piece of dragon fruit, she mashed it up with the lemon. Um, this is a concept that, you know, I've seen more in Asia. So what do you guys think about Chinatowns importing more ideas straight from Asia, you know, and a lot of the older Chinatown culture, or at least the Chinatown products that were once known as Chinatown, uh, might be kind of going away or just being like aged out, you know? Um, Cause obviously everything has to look very aesthetic now. Look how bright this drink is. This drink like never existed before like five years ago.